When I first started the podcast, I was extremely nervous. I thought I was the only former professional hockey player to really be struggling with addiction. It didn't take long for me to realize that this was a real problem in the hockey community. There have been a multitude of deaths related to mental health and addiction in the hockey community. People started to first take notice back in 2011 when we saw three NHL players die within just a few months of each other. Shortly after that, I was completely disconnected from the hockey community. I was so enthralled in my addiction, I had no idea what was going on around me or certainly not in the hockey community. Back to when I started the podcast. I was nervous. I thought I was the only one with this story. Shortly after that, Matt Thompson told me about Matthew Lazinski. And it was evident to me that there was more than just me struggling. And in fact, somebody had lost their life because of it. In my opinion, one life is too many. Two lives is way too many. And what happened after that was even worse. I started to uncover the darkness in the hockey community. Not only suicides, but so many overdoses. And we're not just talking about professional hockey players. We're talking about minor hockey players too. That's right. Shortly after starting the podcast, Sportsnet released an article sharing my story. In that story, I wanted to tell the writer Gare Joyce about my experiences with Mitch Fadden down in Norfolk, Virginia and also at the Tampa Bay Lightning's prospect camp. But I was reluctant. I didn't want to use his name without his permission and I hadn't talked to him in years. So I carried on with the story and I left out his name. After it was released, I went on a mission to try to find Mitch to explain to him that I would turned my life around and that I wanted him on my podcast. I must have left him five or six Facebook messages explaining to him how I turned my life around and I hoped that we could reconnect. About three weeks after that article was released, I got a phone call from a guy named Justin Bryan. He told me I should sit down. And I knew in that moment, something wasn't right. He carried on to tell me that Mitch Fadden lost his life on December 3rd, 2017 to a fatal overdose. In that moment, I was blown away. I'd ar- I was already blown away by the development of Matthew Lazinski, but now this was a guy that I knew. This was my former teammate. This was my former roommate. This was my friend. This one hurt the heart. I knew Mitch had his struggles. We struggled together on numerous occasions. And we also laughed, we fought, and in some cases we even cried. I never did see Mitch Fadden again after he left Norfolk, after he went back to the Western Hockey League and I carried on with my pro career. Mitch was twice the hockey player I was and one of the most skilled guys in the entire Western Hockey League. He was one of those guys that you just couldn't take your eyes off of when he was on the ice. He was just that skilled. He had red hair, I used to call him Carrot Top and it would piss him off. We would fight like cats and dogs but at the end of the day we were brothers. We were teammates. I'm still in disbelief that Mitch is gone, but when I heard the news and once it registered, my focus went from drive to overdrive. Today marks three years that we lost Mitch Fadden. There's nothing anyone can do to bring him back, but there's so much we can do to remember him. Not only can we honor him, but I know I can honor him by keeping doing exactly what I'm doing, staying on the right path, and never going back to addiction. I'm really not good with this kind of stuff. It makes me emotional, it makes me feel awkward, it makes me feel weird, and honestly it makes me feel scared. But it also makes me feel extremely grateful. I'm here to honor guys like Mitch Fadden and Matthew Lazinski and all the men and women that we've lost to things like suicide and addiction. There's absolutely no explanation for why I'm here and why they are not. I've stopped asking myself those questions and started to put my head down and go to work. It's time to make change in the hockey community. I never ever want to see a headline like this again. Not only because it was my friend, but my brother in the hockey community. You may be gone, but you're never forgotten. Love you, brother. There's no question that Mitch is up there right now scoring on the likes of Terry Sawchuk and Pelly Lindbergh. Forever skating with angels, but never forgotten. Rest in peace, Mitch.